So here we have another sentence, another example where we can see how and when to use the plusquamperfecto del subjuntivo. Look at this set, second sentence. Si hubieses comido toda la comida, hubieras podido mirar televisión. Okay? If you had eaten all your food, you would have been able to watch TV. Si hubieses comido toda la comida, hubieras podido mirar televisión. You see, in the if clause, the word C that begins the sentence is the if, right? So, the if clause, you use hubieses comido. And what would happen if the condition is met, we use hubieras podido, okay? So, let's see how we conjugate this for every subject pronoun. Yo hubiera, or, yo, sorry, yo hubiera comido, or, yo hubiese comido. Tú hubieras comido, or, tú hubieses comido. Él hubiera comido, or, él hubiese comido. Nosotros hubiéramos comido, nosotros hubiésemos comido. Vosotros hubierais comido. Vosotros hubieseis comido. Ustedes hubieran comido. Ustedes hubiesen comido. And ellos hubieran comido or ellos hubiesen comido. So depending on what part of the sentence we use hubiera or hubiese. Okay? So let's now jump into the third group of verbs. The verbs that end with ir. Okay? So this is uh, the group of verbs that has more irregulars. But we will see a regular verb, the verb vivir or to live. Example. Él hubiera vivido allí si le hubiese gustado. This means he would have lived there if he had liked it. Again. Él hubiera vivido allí si le hubiese gustado. Actually, I have a, a typo here. Instead of vivido, it should say vivido. V-I-V-I-D-O, right? So, there's a typo there. Vivido should uh, keep the root of the verb vivir, okay? Never mind. So, él hubiera vivido allí si le hubiese gustado. So, inside the if clause, si le hubiese gustado, we use hubiese, right? The hubiese conjugation. And outside of the if clause, when we, when we express what would happen if the condition is met, we use the hubiera conjugation, okay? El hubiera vivido allí, okay? So, we can also invert the order. We can say, uh, we can say it this way. If he had liked it, he would have lived there, okay? Si le hubiese gustado, él hubiera vivido allí. So the order doesn't mind, okay? Same as in English as, with, uh, as in Spanish. Here we can see another example. Si el abuelo hubiese vivido un poco más, hubiera conocido al nieto. If the grandfather had lived a bit longer, he would have known or would have met his grandson. Right? In Spanish, for, uh, uh, for to say met his grandson, we use the verb to know, right? So we literally say to know his son, but we mean to meet his son, okay? So if the grandfather had lived a bit longer, he would have known, he would have met his son, his grandson. Si el abuelo hubiese vivido un poco más, hubiera conocido al nieto. So inside the if uh, clause, we use hubiese, yes, hubiese vivido, had lived. Outside of the if clause, when we are uh, 
talking of the, about the what would happen if the condition is met, we use the hubiera, right? The hubiera conjugation. Hubiera conocido. So hubiese and hubiera. Try to see when one is used and when the other one is used, okay? So let's conjugate now beginning with the uh, pronoun I. Yo hubiera vivido or yo hubiese vivido. Tú hubieras vivido. Tú hubieses vivido. Él hubiera vivido. Él hubiese vivido. Or ella or usted, right? Nosotros hubiéramos vivido. Nosotros hubiésemos vivido. Vosotros hubierais vivido. Vosotros hubieseis vivido. Ustedes hubieran vivido. Ustedes hubiesen vivido. And ellos hubieran vivido. Ellos hubiesen vivido. ¿Ok? Remember that usted, the pronoun usted, is the formal you, ¿ok? So, for the, for the singular you, ¿ok? We have tú, which is the informal or friendly you, and the usted, which is the inf sorry, tú is the informal or friendly, and the usted is formal or respectful you, right? And we use usted when we address somebody that is much older than us, or somebody whose status requires uh, us to address him uh, with a some uh, respectful distance, okay? Like a president, a CEO, a boss with whom we don't have, we do not have a, a friendly um, relationship. Or also when we uh, are talking to somebody we are not really acquainted with or we do not know. Okay, so for example, when we talk uh, with somebody in the street or with a customer. Okay, there we use the subject pronoun usted. Also, the plural you has two different subject pronouns, vosotros and ustedes. Vosotros, they actually both mean the same thing. Vosotros is used in Spain and ustedes is used in Latin America. But you can choose which one you feel more comfortable with and just stick to that one in whatever Spanish-speaking country you are, right? Because that will be fine. So this is the end of our... A fifth lesson uh, within the topic of modo subjuntivo. So we still have one lesson more to finish this topic. So I see you next class. Goodbye.